So the first thing that our application needs and what we're going to start with is this products component where we're going to dispatch an action saying that we want to load the pizzas. Now, when we actually come to load the pizzas, we're going to use and introduce NGRX effects. However, that's kind of down the line. What we first want to do is kind of understand the building blocks of the store. We're going to populate it with some static data and then we're going to convert that over to using an effect where we can communicate with the outside world and then bring that data back to our store. We'll then pass it into this component where we're going to then render out the pizzas. So let's jump back to the code. What we'll do is first set up some actions, then we're going to set up our reducer, and then we're going to learn how to bind this to the template. So what we're going to do is dive into our products folder. This folder is where everything that we're going to do is going to live. So inside of here, we're going to create a new folder called store. Now this store folder is actually going to contain our actions, our reducers, and our effects, and any selectors that we compose. Now we haven't really talked about any of these in much detail, and obviously we'll continue through the course learning more about these. So inside the store, the first thing that we'll do is create an actions folder, then in the same folder, we can create a reducers folder. Again, inside of the store folder, we're going to create an index.ts. So this is really, really helpful. You don't have to adopt this approach for things like components, containers, or services. I've actually started using this approach and exporting all my services in an index file. That approach for you might work. However, when it comes to using our store, I would highly recommend that you use an index.ts to manage everything. Now we don't need to touch our index.ts just yet, so I'm gonna close that off. The first thing that we're going to do is jump into our actions folder. So inside of here, what we can do is create pizzas.action.ts. So this is where we're going to create our first set of actions. Now in the previous chapter, what we actually looked at was our custom Redux store, and we looked at things called action creators. So this is where our action constants and our action creators are all going to live. When it comes to actually dealing with things like NGRX actions, it's a good idea to kind of think about the mental process as we go. So the first thing that we want to do is import something that we haven't looked at before, and this is called the action. Now, because we have NGRX store already imported, we can go ahead and just import that action. Now, when it comes to our action classes, we actually want to implement this interface. That's all it is. So let's have a click through. We can see the TypeScript definition file. We have export interface action, and it has a type of string. Now in the conceptual videos, we actually saw this and we knew that payload is a completely optional property. So essentially we have payload and then any, this has actually been removed from the code and we just have our type with the string. So we can obviously close this, we don't wanna make any changes. So we need this for all of our actions because we want to actually implement that against our action creators. Now, there's a few things that we want to do to actually load the pizzas. So what I like to do is create some comments just to separate these out. We say load pizzas. Now let's go ahead and define some new constants. We're gonna say export const load underscore pizzas. We can then assign that a value. Now, because we talked about namespacing, what I'm gonna do is call this the products. So this acts as a kind of namespace. You don't have to do it because in this example, we're not actually going to load pizzas anywhere else in our application, but it's a good practice just to namespace these as per the feature modules. We haven't hooked up our feature module just yet, but this will make sense once we get onto that section. So let's continue. We can do load pizzas. What I'm gonna do is just duplicate this twice. The first one we can say is going to be underscore fail, and we can say load pizzas fail. Secondly, we can do success, and we can say load pizza success. So we've now defined the three things that can happen when we load the pizzas. First off, we want to dispatch an action called load the pizzas. That's either going to fail or it's going to succeed. If it fails, we can dispatch this action. When it's successful, we can dispatch this action. So we're communicating here kind of via events. And these events describe the steps of what is happening in our application, and we can then respond to them accordingly. 
So you may have guessed, the next step is that we want to actually define some action creators. So what we're going to do is export a class called load pizzas. And first off, what I'll do is just keep it like this. We're going to say read only type equals. Now instead of actually adding a string inside of here, what we're going to reference is this above. So we're gonna, we can just simply paste this in place. Now, the reason that we imported this action is just to make sure for TypeScript purposes that we implement the action so that this makes sense and we can kind of guarantee that if we were to make a mistake, TypeScript will tell us that we incorrectly implement the interface. So this is nice for type checking purposes. Now, the reason that the payload property was actually removed is because we can call the payload property anything that we like. I like to keep my code consistent. So what we'll be using is just the payload to keep things nice and simple when it comes to like thinking about things inside of our reducers. So we can make this nice and easy. We can just copy this and add it underneath. For this one, we're going to say that the load pizzas fail and we can then adjust this accordingly. So you can see that we're just creating the boilerplate ready for our store to respond to these actions. Now, interestingly, when we do have a failure, what we're going to do is say public payload be of type any. So we can pass a message as the payload property back from the server if there is an error. Now what we can do underneath is grab the fail and we want to just paste that in. And we're gonna rename this one to the success. Similarly, we can rename the action constant. Now instead of using a public payload of any, we actually are going to get a pizza array. Now before we import the type, we'll just jump across to the db.json, which has all this information inside. So this db.json is a local server. It's a fake server that just uses pure JSON. When we make a request to it, it's gonna return the data that we ask. So when we hit, for instance, forward slash pizzas, we're then going to return the pizzas. When we hit forward slash toppings, it will then return all of these toppings. So inside of here, we've actually got the pizzas and they are given to us back from the server as an array of data. Now a pizza has a name, it has a toppings, and it also has an ID. So what we can do is go back up the top and we just want to import that interface. So we're gonna say import the pizza and we have to go back just two directories here into our models folder where we can go and grab that pizza model. Now if we just take a quick look at this, we have an ID, the name and the toppings, which is a topping array. Each topping again has an ID, a name and a key string so we can look this up via an index. So that's all we need to know for now. What we now need to do is actually export our action types. Now these are simply used in our reducer and we'll come on to that in the next video. But what we essentially need to do is export our own type called the pizzas action. We can then assign our action creators to this. So we can say load pizzas or load pizzas fail, or it's going to be load pizzas success. So you should end up with pizzas action, load pizzas, load pizzas fail, and load pizzas success. So we're going to use this in the next video to tie in with our reducers and we'll show how the type checking will work for us in there.